Well, we're building on the foundation that was laid in the last nugget on standard access lists, enhancing it now with more capabilities in the extended world. Same story, multiple scenarios back to back to back that we're going to walk through to show examples of using extended access lists and by doing that, solidify the concept. Same topology as before, so we can focus on the access list concept, not relearning what the network looks like. We've got five scenarios, three of which are on the screen right now. Number one, use an extended access list to block 192.168.1.0/24, so these guys, from reaching 192.168.2.128/25. It's these guys. Now, is it possible to do that using a standard access list? Yes, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, however, we can be a lot more efficient and it's just the norm to be using extended access lists for these kind of things. Anytime you have a source and a destination or port number or anything like that, extended access list is the way to go. So, as a refresher, extended access lists, they can filter uh, based on source and destination IP. They can filter based on protocol, so things such as uh, TCP, UDP, ID, ICMP, etc., etc., etc. Those are the ones we care about in ZCNA. Uh, and then port number. So, for instance, TCP port 80, TCP port uh, 25, all that kind of stuff. Now, before, well, uh, let me, I'm going to hold off. So, let me do this. I'll show you the kind of the base example, and then I'm going to start talking about what are some common port numbers that you're going to run into. So. What we're going to do is start off with the big question. Where do we start off? <laughs> Remember, there's two things. You configure the access list, uh, which you can do all day without affecting anything, and then you apply the access list. Uh, that's where it goes into action. But before you can configure, you have to know where you're at. Now, here's, here's the concept. With extended access lists, we can filter based on source and destination. So based on this question, we need to create a statement that says deny uh, 192.168.1.0 slash 24 from reaching 192.168.2.128 slash 25, right? So we can we can put that statement in there and then we can we can say permit anything else. I'm just kind of pre-planning our steps with this. Now think this through with me. If if I can say deny this source from reaching that destination, where can I apply it? Well there's actually a lot of places. I could apply it like we were doing with the standard access list outbound right here to say as they're going out that interface, check this. Is it this source? Are they trying to access this? Then they will be denied and it will work. Absolutely. But follow this. I could apply it inbound right here, right? And I could, you know, as packets are coming in, they're chugging along their way. As they get in, it's going to say, okay, are you this? And they'll say, yes, we are, because we're coming from here. Uh, and it's going to say, well, are you trying to access this? And they'll say, yes, we are. That's where we're going. They'll say, okay, well then right here, I'm going to deny you. So it's following that same logic. Do you see, do you see the, the, the point here? I could apply it outbound right here. I could apply it inbound right here. I could apply it outbound right here, and I could even apply it inbound right here, because even before the packets get into the router, it can, you know, before they, they go any further, it can say, are you this? Are you trying to access this? Oh, okay, then you're going to be denied. So I could even deny them right here. So so then the, the big question is, I could apply this, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six different places. They all work. They all accomplish the result. What's the best place to do it? Cisco would tell you, right here. Why? Because the further down the chain you apply the extended access list, the further the traffic has to go just to find out that it's blocked. So if I apply it right here, that means this router had to process it waste bandwidth, this router had to process waste bandwidth, and it had to get here and be processed before it found out it was going to be denied. Like I said in the last nugget, it's like that bad trip to Disneyland. We're driving all that way just to find out Disneyland is closed. Uh, so we'd rather know before we leave the house, essentially right here, uh, uh, that it's closed or that we're going to be denied, and that's Cisco's best practice. With extended access lists, the rule is to apply them as close to the source as possible. Even though it will work further away, we want to be able to, to be as efficient in our configuration as possible too. So with that in mind, that's where I'm going to begin my configuration. Let's go over to router 1. So I have all the. I, I was getting rid of all of the old config from the previous one. So let's let's clear all that off. Uh, gone. So router one, 
Uh, now I'm going to go. Let's let's start. And I know last nugget we wrapped up with the named access list, and we'll we'll go there. But I'm going to start off with the traditional way, which is numbered. Uh, first off, let's do a show IP interface brief. That's just constant orientation. Okay, it's I, I know where I am. That's one uh one nine two one six eight one one. That's right here. Fast Ethernet zero serial zero is right here. Uh, so I'm going to create an access list. I'll do access list question mark. Uh, now we're going to move into the extended range. So I'm going to say uh, extended. Now now you remember the syntax from the last nugget, right? So for instance, if I said, you know, five and I would say permit and it's like, okay, what's your source? You kind of got used to that, right? So now when I do access list, let's go uh, 100. I'm now in the extended range. I hit the question mark. Immediately I see, oh, there's a, a little difference there. There's this new word dynamic. We're actually not going to use those, but but there's a new word in there. So I already can tell that I'm moving on a little different track. So what am I doing? Denying somebody. I'm denying uh, 192.168.10 from reaching the other one. So, okay, so I'm going to say deny, question mark, and now it's like, whoa, syntax went a totally different direction. First question it's going to ask you is what protocol? What protocol? Remember, that's one of the things we can filter on. What protocol would you like to allow or deny? Key ones that we care about, ICMP. That's things like pings, echo, echo reply, uh, unreachables, all those kind of things. TCP and UDP and IP. So ICMP, protocol-wise, TCP, UDP, and IP. Uh, these three we know. Those are the, the protocols that applications use. So what's, what's this mysterious IP? IP is everything. Like, for instance, you see a whole bunch of protocols there. And if I allow, you know, maybe I block TCP traffic from this. Well, the problem is that allows UDP to still get through. That allows, you know, ICMP or IGMP and ESP. All, all this other stuff can still get through because there's other protocols than TCP. But if I really want to catch all of them, IP is essentially every one of these in one. It's all protocols. Uh, is what it is, and that's what we want here. We we said block this from getting there. It didn't specify anything more, so we're left to assume block. That's what it means, like deny everything, not just TCP or UDP. So we're actually going to go in here and say deny the IP protocol. Now it asks the question, what source address would you like to deny from? And I'll say, okay, well, I'm not actually looking for everybody, nor am I looking for a specific host. Uh, I'm, I, I've been told to block this network, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in and say the source that I'm blocking is 192.168.1.0. And of course, it's going to say, okay, well, is, give, me some, give me something more. Are you, are you looking for just a host on there or the whole subnet? So that's where our good old wildcard mask comes in. Remember, this is from before. This is a class C subnet mask. Flip that completely backwards, rebel land in the wild world. We flip that around 000, which says, look at 192, look at 168, look at 1. I don't care about that last octet. So that can be anything. If it starts with this, they match this. They are going to be denied. So I'll say 000, 00255. Now we get new options, things that we didn't see at all in the standard access list. It's saying, okay, now what destination? would you like to refer to? So I'm going to say, I am blocking this source from, now I type in the destination. Well, I'm not blocking him from everything, nor a specific host. I'm blocking him from this network, right? 192.168.2.128, right here. So we'll type that in. That's that's the network ID, 192.168.2.128. Hit the question mark. Now it says, what's the wildcard bits? Well, you remember, we used a custom subnet here. So wildcard bits are going to be 0, 0, zero dot and how do we figure that out well slash 25 in decimal is 255.255.255.128 one of those funky subnet masks so i could either uh convert all this to binary and then make all the one zeros and all the zeros one to figure it out or we can use that handy dandy formula which is to take 255 255 255 255 and subtract this and that gives us 000 127 is the wildcard mask that we need to use to match that whole network. So come in there and do 000127. Zero, 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 Hit the question mark. It's, you know, things like, do you want to log this enter entry? Is there certain types of service that you want to match? I mean, it, that, all of this goes way beyond. Types of service, uh, DSCP, all those kind of things deal with quality of service. Same thing here, different quality of service tags that we can use. Don't even worry about it for now. Um, I hit enter. 
Doo -doo. We have entered our first extended access list statement. Let's do a do show IP access list. Um, right there, we've got deny this source to this destination. Now, extended access list can get pretty hairy. Um, the biggest thing that you can do is remember the three key pieces. You're going to say, well, I'll say, you know, permit or deny, right? I guess that, that, that doesn't count. <laughs> permit or deny. So you have the protocol. That's one key piece. You pick your protocol. You then have your source and you have your destination. No matter how complex, how big this thing starts getting, like we're going to start seeing over here, no matter how big this is, you're always going to break into those three pieces. You pick what protocol it is, what your source is, and what your destination is. And that makes sense when we look at this. Deny IP, that's the protocol. This is our source. This is our destination. Cool. Now, extended access lists have the same rules as a standard if I have a uh, deny in there there's the implicit deny below that so it's going to deny everything so what I need to do is get in here and type in uh, IP or wait, hang on where was I uh, access list 100 and I need to add a permit so I'm going to say you know they're denied from that but I'm going to permit everything else now in an extended world we have to type in permit so I, when I say I want to permit everything else what protocol is that IP, right? That's everything, all protocols. Uh, what's the source? Well, we can we can actually be very broad here. I can say any source to, well, what do you think? Any destination. That is your way of doing a permit all at the bottom of an extended access list to overrule that deny everybody. So So now it's saying, okay, if you're this and you're trying to go to this, you will be denied. However, if you're anything else, you will be permitted. Even if you're even if you're this trying to access something other than this. Does that make sense? So now, now I can go in to applying it Cisco's best practice as close to the source as possible. So I'm going to go into fast ethernet 0 says 0, same exact command as we saw previously, IP access group and we say, okay, well, what's the access list uh, number or name? And we'll say access list 100. That's the one we just created. So I'm saying apply this access list uh, in the inbound direction. Again, be the router. I'll stop drawing my long arms in a, in a minute. But fast Ethernet 0 size 0 is over here. So I'm saying as things are coming in, in that interface, because that's the interface mode I'm under right here, it's going to start going through that access list and, and saying, are you trying to get over here? Because I'm going to deny you, otherwise you're permitted to go through and pass out the uh, serial 0 slash 0 uh, interface. So that will accomplish the goal. Let's test it. I'm going to go to uh, PC1, that's over there on the left. Nope, it's right here. Uh, and let's just do a show IP interface brief. Yep, that's just the, the little lone guy over there on the network, 192.168.1.50, that's him. So I'm going to try and ping. Uh, let's try and ping 10.1.1.1. Make sure we can still get there. Yep, and that, so 10.1.1.1, you might remember, is this guy. So it's going all the way across the network to here to reach it. Uh, but now, let's, let's add in. Uh, let's go a little further. Let's go to ping 192.168.2.1. 150, which should be a forbidden IP address, and sure enough, it is. So the good news is our, our device is literally getting right here and being blocked. He doesn't have to travel much further like we did with the standard access list. We can't apply the standard access list any closer than out here because you can't say what you're denied from. So we would always have to have all of our traffic crossing the whole network to get there. Now I'm able to go back in to my router one, do a show IP access list. And I can see all the matches, the things that have been denied, as well as the things that are being permitted. Okay, number two. Block 192.168.1.50, so this guy, from reaching 192.168.2.50, so this guy, using HTTP or HTTPS. So what can we assume? Well, we'll just pretend that this guy is actually a web server. Uh, that would be using those. So now is, is what I was holding myself back from. Uh, now is a good time to talk about common port numbers. TCP, UDP, all, all of the different protocols out there have specific port numbers that uh, they use. I'm going to do TCP, UDP, and I'll just put ICMP up here. 
the three protocols we've been talking about so far, I guess we can throw IP, but it doesn't really have any port numbers because that's everything, right? Those are the, the, the protocols that we've been talking about in the config. There are ones that you will want to know off the top of your head. TCP, port 21 FTP. Port 22 is SSH. Uh, TCP port 23 is Telnet. Uh, port, you want to know, port 25, which is SMTP, that's email services. Uh, you'll want to know uh, maybe 53, which is actually a DNS server. Uh, so, for instance, DNS servers that have all those records like Google.com really points to this IP addresses, they, they replicate to each other, uh, or they can, and they use TCP port 53 to do that. Um, port, port 80 the most well-known port in the world, HTTP. Uh, port 110, POP3. That's uh, client email. So if you're downloading email from an email server, uh, you use POP3. Uh, on the same token port, uh, what is it, 143, IMAP4. Uh, which that's same thing, a client email, but uh, instead of downloading it from the server, it leaves it on the server. Uh, so that way the client doesn't hold the email, it all stays on the server. So uh, I'm at four. And then the only other one that I could foresee popping up at you is port 443, and that is HTTPS or SSL. So encrypted or secured HTTP uses that port number. Uh, now I know you're like, oh, that's a lot of port numbers to know off the top of my head. Yes, the vast majority of them are in TCP because that's what all of our data applications use, correct? Uh, now UDP, there are some, but very few. Uh, UDP, you really only want to know port 53, which is DNS client. So when, for instance, your computer at home uh, goes to google.com or cbtnuggets.com and tries to resolve that name to an IP address, it sends out a UDP request. It's just a, that's the normal DNS lookup. Uh, and then port 69, which is TFTP. Our Cisco devices use that for a lot of configuration backups or upgrading the iOS software. So uh, those are really the only two on UDP. ICMP doesn't really use port numbers. Uh, it uses protocol numbers or protocol names. So the only two you'll want to know there is echo and echo reply. And if you if you combine both of those together, what do you get? A ping. That's when you ping something, it sends an echo and the other side sends back an echo reply. Uh, so that's how we that's how we do that. So I would suggest and now this is well, you know, I was going to say if you're studying for the exam, but uh, I would say real world. I mean, you use those all the time because those are the major services that you end up supporting as a Cisco firewall administrator or you know whatever you're doing with those. You, you constantly run across those services. So it's for good reason that Cisco uh, allows those. So, uh, OK, now back to the objective. Block 192.168.1.50 from reaching this guy, who's probably a web server, on port 80 and 443. This is going to be awesome. I just I paused and I was like, I've got an idea. I want to I want to take this opportunity to show you how to edit an access list. Because see, here's the deal: we already have in scenario one blocked this guy from reaching out over here on everything. So now we're saying, okay, in addition to that, I want to block this guy, that one uh, IP address on the network, from reaching to this guy on port 80 and 443. I know that because I. You know, just did the quick correlation. HTTP and HTTPS uh, are there in that list. So, uh, so we've already got an access list applied inbound right here that we can edit uh, to to add those restrictions to. So let's let's do it. So, uh, where am I? Router one. I'm gonna come right there. So there's there's our existing access list. Now you notice that we've got these sequence numbers right there. So that's gonna leave us in a little bit of a pickle because. If we, uh, yes, I did just say pickle. Uh, so th if we use our normal access list command, if I say access list, uh, access, x access list, uh, you know, 100, and I keep going down, I say, you know, permit IP or TCP, and I start squeezing in all this stuff, it's going to keep adding on to the bottom of the list. No, 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 I can't, I can't do that. I want to squeeze stuff in. Now, do any of you remember where we saw that that little when in the last nugget I hit the question mark and we saw the option to type in a sequence number so I can say well squeeze in sequence 15 in between these two or something like that remember where that was it was in the named access list so let's back up a little bit if I type in how to get to the named access list 
IP access list, right? And I'll say uh, this is going to be instead of using number 100 and all that to to specify it's extended. I'm going to say this is an extended access list. But now it lets me type in, oh, which one are you? editing or which one are you creating you can you can do both with this command so we'll say extended and we'll say number 100 now you notice it says okay go ahead and press enter thanks i'm now in the configuration mode editing that access list so now what i can do is specify a ooh, specify a sequence number to squeeze in the commands i'm about to do before we get to that permit ip any any uh, so what are we doing? Okay, so we're we're first off need to needing to block HTTP, uh, and then we'll block HTTPS, which will be really easy once we get the first command. So first off, I'm going to say okay. Previously we had sequences uh, 10 and 20, so I need to squeeze it in. So I, I was saying 15, but why why go right in the middle? Why not just use 11? How's that? So sequence number 11 will will add the line between 10 and 20. This is like any of you. Uh, my roots go back to the Commodore Amiga computer. That's where I really got my first taste of uh, of computing. And I remember <laughs> trying to learn programming. Now, this is many, many moons ago. I was much, much, much younger. And uh, I got into basic programming, thinking, I'm going to, you know, what's every kid dream of, of when they're getting into computers? I want to be a video game programmer, right? Uh, so I got into basic and, it, you know, got the book out and says, okay, uh, type in line 10. Echo, hello world, and then you then you so you type that into the basic compiler ten. Uh, echo, you know, hello world, and then you do line twenty, go to ten, and you run the program, and you just get a screen full of hello world, and it, that's about as far as I got. You know, I'm like, well, that was lame. I'm a long way away from creating, you know, Defender of the Crown kind of games, you know, like <laughs> which was of course the the game of the year back then. So so. Um, what was I talking? Oh, so that so yeah, this is very similar to that, to where we're, we've just got these sequence numbers to keep everything straight. Um, so I'm going to say sequence 11 to squeeze it in there. Now we can put in our permit and deny statements. So I'm going to say deny. We're blocking them uh, from so so saying deny what? Well, HTTP is a TCP-based protocol, right? So uh, I'm going to say deny. TCP. It's the TCP is the protocol that I'm blocking. Now it's saying, who are you denying? Well, it's nice and easy here. So I can say, um, well, there's two ways. I can either say host and type in the IP address, or I can type in the IP address. Let's do 192.168.1.50. Right. That's that's who we're. Let's squeeze this over a little bit. That's who we're we're blocking. 192.168.1.50 from. Uh, and then so I'll hit the question mark. It says, okay, what's your wildcard bis? Zero, 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 zero. So if I would have used the host keyword, I could have skipped doing that because it would assume that. Um, so I'm, now it's going to say, okay, what is your, uh, what is your? <laughs> my, so I've got I've got this mouse right, and the scroll it doesn't have a scroll wheel. It's invisible. Like if you just kind of move over the mouse, it it scrolls for you. So that's why I'm doing that all the time. Uh, so it's saying, okay, this is your source now into your destination. But wait, but wait, this is actually a point where a lot of confusion comes in. Because somebody hits the question mark, which we all do. This is hitting the question mark is something you always do in Cisco. And we see, oh wait, wait. Match packets on a port number or greater than a port number or less than a port number or not equal to a, a port number. Uh, that's an EQ not equal to or a range of ports. So we're like, oh, oh, okay. So this is where I type in my port number, right? major area where, where access lists get kind of messed up. Um, and this goes back to what I was just showing you on the last example. Remember, the access list is always comprised of three main pieces. You say, I want to allow or deny the protocol, which we chose as TCP. The source, you put in your source information, then the destination. Now, you might be saying, well, well, yeah, that's what we're doing, right? And we said port 80. Well, if we type in the port number right here, whoa, not there. Uh, right here, if we type in the port number and we say, okay, equal to port 80, then we're actually choosing the source port, and that's not what we want. I mentioned this way early on in the series, so I want to I talk about it again. When a computer creates a connection to, well, let's just say this web server, um, he'll always create what's known as a socket. 
And what a socket is, this guy is uh, 192.168.2.50, right? And this guy is 192.168.1.50. So a socket is when he says, I want to talk to you, web server. And the web server is like, well, I actually do a lot of stuff. I'm a web server. I'm an email server. I'm a, I'm a, uh, 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 what? <laughs> I'm like, what else? Oh, I'm an online gaming server. I'm a database server. I mean, he's like, so what service on me do you want to talk to? You can't just say you want to talk to me. You got to tell me what on me you want to talk to. So that's why this guy creates a, a socket. He says, well, actually, I want to talk to you, 192.168.2.50. I want to talk to you on a socket of uh, 192.168.2.50 colon 80, which now when he gets that, he goes, oh, okay, you're trying to access my, my web server because that's assigned to port 80 on here. But at the same token, this guy also creates a source socket. To where he says, oh, I'm coming from 192.168, you know, when you talk back to me, I'm coming from 192.168.1.50, colon, what is it? Mm hmm, how's uh, 5,196? <laughs> we don't know because Windows makes that up. When I open, you remember this? When I open a, a web browser, I open, you know, Google and go to cbtnuggets.com, uh, the the operating system we did this uh, early on we do netstat uh, it comes in and says okay well I'm creating all these little source ports you know this is my source IP address um, and I'm I'm going you know coming from this source port which identifies you know Google Chrome or uh, whatever whatever app now I've got other stuff right you're like wow that's a lot of stuff well I've got a lot of stuff running on here but you know these I can tell you are all related to CBT Nuggets because CBT Nuggets uh, stores their data in Amazon AWS which uses EC2 uh, services which is uh, uh, that's a that's another great series uh, if you're ever if you're ever interested in that CBT Nuggets has a series on AWS. It's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Uh, so uh, moving on. So this you know, is going to be made up by the operating system. So if go, going back to where we're at, let's see, we were on router one. If we type in equal next to the source, we're going to be saying, I want to deny based on the source port number, which we don't know what that's going to be. We rarely, if ever, are going to know what the source port are going to be is is going to be. So so rather, I'm just going to go right into the destination. I'm going to say, okay, I, I've I've specified this. I've specified my source, and I'm not going to specify a source port number because I don't know what it's going to be. I'm just going to move on to the destination. So watch this. Come back here. Oh, I just pasted that in. Uh, and now I'm going to say, okay, destination. Well, the destination host is uh, 192.168.2.50. Hit the question mark. Uh, wildcard bits, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, there we go. So we've got, uh, I'm denying TCP from this source, no port number, to this destination. And now, now we specify the port number. Now notice, equal to a port number. Now we get a ton of other options, like, you know, match flags, log, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But really, the main one that we use is equal to. So I'm gonna say, I want to deny TCP on ports equal to, and I'll hit the question mark, I know I'm reaching the edge of my screen there, uh, equal to, and now look at this, Cisco uh, says you can just type in the port number, which I prefer. You can just type it in right there and we'll take whatever port number you specify. Or Cisco's like, yeah, I know sometimes you forget a lot of the common port numbers. So we created a list of, of <laughs> and I'm putting it in quotes, common port numbers that we haven't updated since 1985. I mean, it, it's like seriously, this, I mean, look at this list. I mean, gopher. Does anyone remember Windows 3.1 where where you had the original like little gopher? It, it had the little teeth. It, teeth. Uh, the, the, it was like it was FTP before there was FTP. So, I mean, if you want to remember the, this archaic list, then go for it. But I'm telling you, just just stick to the port number. Uh, you know, so let's go on. So you can see the list. Now, notice this. It's not even HTTP that they chose as the name. They said www, which again, it's it's been that way since long, long ago. So we'll just put equal to eighty. How about how about that? Whoa! Did you, did you see what just happened there? Uh, it just kind of scooted over and put a dollar sign. Uh, remember, way early on in the series, I said if if you ever type a line that's really long, the iOS is like, okay, I'm going to put a dollar sign uh, representing that you've reached the end of that line. So, uh, or or I should say, there's more more to the left here. So you can scroll back to see the see the see the entire thing. So I'll hit the enter key, and now I've got that in there. Now watch this. I'm going to do a 
uh, show IP access list so we can verify that command. So notice, first off, sequence 11, so it squeezed it in between 10 and 20. That was successful. Notice as well that the Cisco IOS recognized it goes, oh, you're using a wildcard mask of all zeros. Tell you what, how about we make that a host? <laughs> so so remember I said you can you can type it one of two ways? Well, you can, but the Cisco IOS is like, I prefer this way. It's a little prettier that way. So let's let's do that. So it converts it back to you. And also notice it recognized port 80. He goes, oh, well, you're, you really mean www. Does, does that mean that we have to know that? No, it just means that, that you know, there's there's a, you know, the iOS does a lot of stuff behind the scenes and, and that's fine. We'll, we'll let it do that. So that now allows, or I should say denies, uh, TCP from this source on any source port number to this host using the destinate member when we we're talking about the socket this is a destination port number destination port of 80 now what about HTTPS that is just an up arrow away I hit the up arrow and say okay well well actually I'll go back to the beginning and say this will be line 12 sequence 12 otherwise it'll but you might go well what happens if you put uh, uh, 11 uh, some iOS versions it'll it'll squeeze it in and bump the other one down a lot of other ones it'll say uh, it'll either overwrite it or it will it, it, it's iOS dependent or it'll just say sorry there's something else at sequence 11 you can't create it there um, so it's usually best just you know don't don't try and figure out which which you got just go in and specify a unique sequence number uh, so I'll put 443 that's HTTPS. Hit the up arrow. Look at that. We've now got two lines in there. Uh, that's denying. We're saying deny this source host to this destination host uh, on this destination port for both of them. Okay, great. Now this, so we edited the existing access list. The beauty is it's still applied to the interface. So I still have the ability to go in there uh, and test this. I don't have to reapply it or anything like that. Now, you got to be careful. It's a little dangerous because these, these commands are going into action right away. So if you mess up, it's, it's not like, oh, whoops, you know, like this is while it's while the router is working so so these are immediately active when you press the enter key so let's test it how do i test this okay uh, one way that we can test access list now obviously this is a router that's simulating as if i was a pc um, and does a very good job at that but there's no web browser on here so i can't open a web uh, a website and, and test it there and, and nor is this device really a web server uh, but one of the things i can do is use the telnet command to test you might say well Telnet, wait a sec, that uses port 23. It does. But, watch this, I'm going to type in telnet uh, 192.168.2.50, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow up here and see that it gives me the option to type a port number. So I can say, well, tell it. if I just hit the enter key, it will tell that. And I can see, oh, yeah, hey, I can tell that to that device. That's that's great. Okay, so I'm going to get past that. So that, that verifies to me that port 23 is working. Uh, but when I go back and I'll say, well, I want to specify tell that to port 80. It immediately comes back. It's like, eh, deny. Now, okay, did that, did that happen because this guy isn't running a web server? Or did it happen because the access list really did block that? Well, how do you think we can see? Go to router 1. Hit the up arrow and see, did we have any hits? Ah, and we did. We essentially, PC1 sent three attempts to try and open that that uh, www port. It tried to get there, uh, and the router was like, you're denied, you're denied, you're denied. So, okay, let's, let's try this. Let's hit the up arrow and try 443. Hit the up arrow. Look at that. Now we have three matches on that. So that will, I mean, without actually having a computer with a web server to, in a, or a web server set up and a, and a web client to test, what a great, and by the way, everybody does this. This is a very common thing in the, the real realm of Cisco that you're constantly using Telnet to really test if your uh, port restrictions are working or not. And in this case, we can see they are working like a gem. Now I'd like you to pause the the nugget and see if you can do number three on your own even if you don't have a cisco ios in front of you whether it's gns3 or a real router still just just write it down on paper uh, that's that's where you really get used to the syntax write it down and see if you can figure out the commands that you would use now i will i will tell you it's it's a it's a little challenging it goes a little a little different mindset than what we've done so far um okay so pause and let's do it okay so uh, permit 192.168.2.0 to access 10.111. Let's identify the player. So I'm saying permit this whole subnet, 
See, 192.168.2.0, that's the network ID, slash 25. So that, that whole subnet, and we figured that out in the last nugget, that's really 192.168.2.0 uh, through 127. Uh, this being the broadcast, that being the network. So, you know, the first one's usable, one, all, all that. We figured out the range for that. So we're saying that whole range can access this guy only using Telnet and SSH. Now, again, this IP address right here. So where are we at? Most efficient, close to the source as possible is going to be router 2. Okay, So I'm going to go in uh, router 2. And uh, let's just clear the screen from, as from the previous nugget. So let's clear the screen off there. Uh, router 2, and I'm going to shrink this down just so we can keep things in front of us. All right, so I've got permit 192.168. Dot two, <laughs> there's, oh, there we go. How about how about right here? Permit uh, 192.168.2.0 uh, tax set. So I'm going to go in, uh, and let's use let's let's use this opportunity to use a named access list. Again, you can use a number. That's fine if you did this beforehand. But I'm going to use a named one because it'll kind of get you experience with that side as well. Anytime you want to use a named access list, it is IP access list. And then we hit the question mark. We say okay, extended. Uh, we're in the extended world now. And what name do you want to do? We'll just say, uh, let's just say R3 uh, Telnet SSH. How's that? Uh, just, just a unique name. Okay. So I'm going to come in here and uh, do a permit. Now, again, we could specify sequence numbers and all that, but I'm, this is a new access list, so I'm just going to let it kind of generate those for me. Um, so I'll do permit. And we're going to say the, the uh, uh, protocol. So we'll, we'll say uh, TCP uh, as the protocol. Permit TCP because uh, Telnet and SSH are both TCP based. That's port 22 and port 23. So permit TCP from the source of 192.168.2.0. With a wildcard mask, and uh, you know we've figured this out a couple times, it's actually 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.127 uh, is that custom wildcard mask for the slash 25, right? So that that is what that's how the router knows it's all of these IP addresses, 0 through 127. Uh, so I hit the question mark. It says, okay, you can either type in a destination address or put in port numbers. Now, again, we're not going to make that, that mistake. If we type in a port number here, it's the source port number, and we're not doing that. We, we, we're caring if it's going to the Telnet and SSH protocol. It's going to this device on port 22 or 23, not coming from port 22 or 23. So I'm going to say it's going to uh, the host 10.1.1.1 because we're only uh, we're only permitting uh, access to this one uh, using those port numbers. So uh, let me uh, now. Okay, so we've got the the source. So this is the source information. This is the destination, and now we can put in the port number. So I'll say uh, equal to. Oh, there's another way I could do this, but I'm not going to do that yet. So we're going to say equal to 22. Enter. Uh, and, and then I'm just, I mean, now it's easy. I hit the up arrow and say equal to 23. That is SSH is port 22 and Telnet is port 23. Now, to what, I was, what I was brainstorming is I, I was saying you could also come in here. I mean, the, the options are endless. I could type in, uh, not reflect. I could type in reflect, but I'm going to say range uh, and I could say uh, 22 to 23. That, that would do it in one line if you want to in an access list. So it's saying both of those port numbers from, or I could do 22 through 1,024. I mean, there, you can put in whatever is the end end port. So that, that would be another option, but we're not doing that. So uh, delete all this. Okay, so let's do a show IP access list on this router. So we've got, okay, the, the core of this is done. We're permitting uh, this and this. Um, and so, so initially you're like, okay, I think we're, we're good. We can, we can apply it, right? No, because what, what that will do is that says, okay, you're permitted to access this on port 22 and 23, but everything else hits the implicit deny, right? So, and that would, that would say, okay, I can't access anything over here. I can't get to this guy. I mean, so you might, and you know, this, this just said only block access to that, uh, not all of the other pieces that are in here. So, so we've got to be a little more, little, do a little more than that. Uh, so I'm going to come back here, and we're going to say, okay. So I need to to say these two are permitted. Uh, everything else to this guy has to be denied to that to that IP address because it says 
only as a telling as, but then I need to permit everything else, right? Every, everything else should be allowed. And that's exactly what we'll do. So come back in here. I'm still in the named access list, so I'm going to say deny, whoa, <laughs> with caps lock, with authority. Uh, deny, uh, and, and I'll say, and this is a very common mistake, it's easy to say TCP, you know, just kind of copy and paste this whole thing again. But remember, TCP is just TCP. There's, there's all kinds of other stuff. So I'm going to say deny IP. So everything else from, now we can copy and paste, uh, actually, this whole thing. Everything else from this source to this destination is now denied, right? So let, hang on, let's look at look at the access list now. It says, okay, this is allowed, so I can SSH, I can Telnet. Then everything else from this source to this destination is now denied, which is achieving our goal. But then, uh, but I want to say, but beyond that, everything else is allowed. How do I do that? Uh, permit IP. <laughs> I was sitting there, I was like, I think I forgot. Uh, permit IP any any. So now that allows everything else. So here's here's what I want to, here's here's a couple things. So, okay, so er, let me let me finish the config and then, then we'll uh, expound on it. Uh, so now I want to go into interface serial 0 slash 1, right? That, this is going to be where we apply it as things are going out of that interface. Ooh, is that the most efficient? Actually, no. Man, I almost busted myself. The most efficient would be inbound right here. This is really efficient, you could say, as it's coming out this interface, but you could be even you could but the router would then have to accept it, process it, and get it to here just to find out it's denied. So we can even save a couple more processor nanocycles by saying, uh, you know, uh, as it comes in right here, I want to say, are you going right here uh, using anything other than Telnet and SSH because you're going to be denied. So this will be our, our good application point. So I'm going to go into not serial, uh, fast Ethernet zero slash zero, and I'll do IP access. Put my bend down. IP access group. Uh, R3 Telnet SSH in. Ooh, uh, we've now applied that in the inbound direction. Okay, so here's something, I want to show you something that, that I find a lot of folks uh, get stuck on. I got stuck on it when I first learned access list, so I know, I know, I know a lot of people run into this as well because I see it. Uh, so, so we just said uh, deny everything to 10.1.1.1, right? Except for, yeah, I know, I know, except for port 22 and 23. Uh, that's permitted. That's Telnet and SSH. Uh, so, so the question is, if everything is denied right here, can this host still make it through here and access that guy? You know, option A, yes. Option B, you know, here's your exam. No. Option C, uh, none of the above. Whatever. You know, this this would be a good exam question. Will it make it through? The answer is actually absolutely yes. No problem. Because remember, if you, you, you this guy is 192.168.2.50, and he let's say he's trying to access 192.168.2.150, right? So let's just say he pings from here to here. Well. All IP is denied to 10.1.1.1. So the packet will actually fly along. Da, 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 well, actually, well, it's, it, we put the filter right here, but let's just pretend we put it right there. Um, the, the packet would fly along, and as it comes in here, it would say, okay, are you are you uh, 192.168.2.0? Are you part of this subnet? And he would say, yes, I am. And he would say, okay, are you trying to access, you know, let's look at the access list. He would say, are you trying to access, uh, where am I? Oh, right here. Uh, are you trying to access this IP address using port 22? And he would say, no, actually, I'm not. He's going to say, okay, okay, are you trying to access this this IP address using Telnet? And the packet would say, no, actually, I'm not. Then he would say, okay, then you're not permitted on either one of those. He goes, okay, now, wait a sec. Are you this person trying to access this IP address in any way whatsoever? And the answer is, no, I'm not. I'm not interested in you at all. I don't even know you exist from this guy's perspective. I created a packet, which was a ping, and I said it's coming from the source IP address of 192.168.250, going to the destination IP address of 192.168.2.150. So when this, this packet gets here, he goes, okay, well, you know what? As long as your destination IP address is not 10.1.1.1, because if it were, man, you're busted, you're dropped. 
But since your destination IP address is not 10.1.1.1, then I'm going to say this is not a match because you're not you're not trying to access even though you're going through that IP address you don't know you're going through it you're not trying to access that IP address um, so that line doesn't match and you hit the permit IP any any at the bottom are you feeling it yet are you, are you looking at these access lists it's starting to feel a little warm and cozy with them let's do two more I want to solidify this down number one block 192.168.10 slash 24 that's these guys from accessing any WAN IP address so that's this and this. Those are our wide area network links. Okay, so there's there's two ways we could approach this. First off, it says from reaching any, from reaching, uh, that, that's a key word there, uh, because that means block everything. Don't TCP, UDP, everything, right? So so from reaching, okay. Second thing is there's two approaches we could take. There's, I'm sure, plenty more than that, but two main ones. Uh, one, we could say deny to that IP address. Deny to this IP address. Deny to this, you know, do the individual host route and deny to each one of those. We could do that in four ACL statements. Uh, we could also go in there and, and say deny to this network. Deny to this network. And we could do the same thing in two ACL statements. Rule of thumb, less is more. <laughs> the shorter your access list, the better it is because it takes less to process that kind of access list on your on your route. It's more efficient, and it's just the best practice. Fewer lines is better access list. So that's the way we want to go with it. So uh, what I'm going to do, just so we don't we don't get any old access list in the way from our tests, let's first off go to router one, and I'm just going to remove any any access list that we have. Uh, in action. Let me do a show. Let's just do a show run and I'll do section interface. Show me the config for all the interfaces. Oh, there's one. Uh, we got one on the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. So let's, looks like that's the only one. I'm going to do interface FA 0 slash 0, no uh, IP access group 100 in. That section command is pretty nice, huh? So you can you can see just those sections of the configuration. Uh, you can do that with just about anything in the running config. So that's out. Okay, now let's look at this. Block 192.168. Uh, so let me just scoot this over here. From any WAN IP address. So first thing we want to do is go in and set up the uh, access list. Let's use a named one. Now that now that we know the named access list, that's all I use nowadays. So I'll say IP access list extended, and I'll say the name of it is no WAN. <laughs> no WAN for you. <laughs> so the no end for you uh, access list is going to say rule number one deny or sequence so, you know, first sequence uh, deny who are we denying what's the source uh, oh what protocol are we denying it's going to be IP because it's everything right TCP UDP etc what source it's going to be 192.168.1.0 uh, what wildcard mask 000255 right Good so far. Identified the first three octets. Uh, next one. It says, okay, what is your destination address? Okay, let's look. Let's scrunch this down a little bit. Destination. I want to deny these networks. Okay, we need a little uh, pen work here. Uh, 10.1.1.1 uh, or .0 slash 30 and .4 slash 30. We want to find out what those mean. And, and again, I just want to emphasize, you know, slash 30 equals, if we were to convert that to, to decimal, you know, it would be eight ones. Uh, eight ones, eight ones, and then so that'd be 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So we've got, I count that right, six ones. Yep, in the last octet. So that's 255.255, 255.252. Kind of get back to that decimal form because we can see it, it makes sense to us, and that 252 is represented right there. It is uh, six ones and two zeros, so I'm going to say, what is my increment? It is a four. That's one, two, Four. So the increment when we they came up with these subnets was a four. So the ranges is actually uh, 10.1.1.0.4.8. This is our typical WAN link range. I know, I know. Some of you are like, I got that, but some some people don't. So I, I want to show the reverse engineering of this along the way. So now we we want to say, okay, well I'm going to say this destination and this destination I want to block, but I have to use a custom wildcard mask. Uh, for that. So again, uh, just like we saw previously, for a custom wildcard mask, we can either reverse all the ones and make them all zeros, uh, zero, 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 and then, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, one, and do it that way. Or you can take this and subtract it from all 255s, you know, 255, 255, 255, 255, and our ending wildcard mask would be zero, 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 three. 
you get the same thing. You know, it's either a 1 plus 2, that's 3, or uh, just subtracting 252 from 255 gives you a 3. So our, our wild card mask, and it is wild looking for those WAN links, uh, will be 0003. So first off, destination address. So WAN link number 1. There. Uh, wild card mask, 0003. Good. Uh, WAN link number 2. Now this we can just hit the up arrow for and say... Uh, 10.1.1.4. Okay, good. Let's look at our progress so far. I'm going to do a show IP access list. Uh, we've got two of them. This one we removed from the interface, so it's not interfering anymore. Uh, we've got the no WAN for you uh, access. You can't even say it. Yeah, no WAN for you. You have to say it like the soup Nazi from Seinfeld. So uh, we've got the source subnet going to this and going to that. So now we've got all denies. That's, that's great. So we need a permit. So I'm going to hit the up arrow, and let's, well, I'll just do... Uh, uh, I, wait a second. I'm still in the I'm still in the named accessless mode. So I'll do permit IP any any. Looks good to me. Yeah. All right. So uh, now where do I where do I apply this? I'm gonna I would say, well, if it applies to 192.168.1.0, the best possible way, the most efficient possible way, would be inbound right here. Okay. Uh, we could do it outbound right here. Uh, however, we would uh, we would have to process it more to actually send it out and deny it. So this is the most efficient way. So in uh, fast Ethernet zero slash zero. So get back there. Done. IP access group no WAN for you in. Uh, so to test, let's go over to that PC number one. Make sure this thing is working here. Uh, PC number one, uh, let's do a ping. Uh, let's just make sure we can ping anything. 192.168.1.1, that's my default gateway. Uh, and now even though, and another great example of what I was just telling you from the previous slide, uh, even though they're denied, oh, my pen is doing something very odd. There we go. Even though they're denied from accessing these WAN links, they can't they can't ping the WAN links themselves. That doesn't mean they can't go through those WAN links, right? Because again, it's coming from this source going to this destination. That doesn't violate any any access list at all. So I should be able to have no problem on router uh, PC1, I should say, pinging 192.168. Let's just go 2.129. That's going all the way over there to the right-hand side, and that's that's pinging just fine. So, let's now ping the uh, WAN links. Let's go 10.1.1. One, unreachable. That's what we want to see. The use indicate access lists are stepping in to uh, to intervene. Let's go back and do our show show IP access. And I'm seeing I'm seeing some uh, matches on that first one. That's that's the first subnet. So let's just ping the second subnet. So let's go to uh, let's go to I scribbled it all. Ten dot one dot one dot five. That's going to be router two. Ten dot one dot one dot five. And again, unreachables being seen. Oop. I don't know what I've done there. So let me just hit the up arrow here. And I can see that now both statements have 11 matches, uh, whereas before it was just one. So we are looking good on that. Okay. So good. Check. Everybody on board? Great. Last one. Permit 192.168.2.50. Uh, permit okay per, okay permit access to 192.168.2.50 using only SMTP POP3 and IMAP4 from anywhere. So I'll clear off all the chicken scratch and this is the computer in question. So we're saying permit anybody to access that using uh, uh, SMTP only SMTP POP3 and IMAP4. You see why knowing those port numbers is so uh, critical. These are all TCP based protocol, SMTP 25, POP3 110, IMAP4 143. So you immediately can fill in the gaps on your firewall. So only those ports are allowed in. I want to show I want to show you another use of access list while we're here. This is the last the last example, so I figure why not. Um, have you ever heard of a debug IP packet? Uh, if somebody tells you to type it, don't. Uh, but what it is is it's the ability to uh, you know the ability to see just about every single thing passing through. So so for example, uh, let me just now I'm in a lab environment. Uh, by the way, this will likely take down a production router. 
uh, if I type in B debug IP packet, what it's going to do is show me the output of every single packet that is going through my router at this time to the screen. Now, nothing. You're like, well, that was exciting. No, well, that's because this router is literally sitting idle. That's very rare. Uh, but for instance, if I were to say ping, let's just ping 192.168.2.1. Uh, I, I can see that. Uh, I see five exclamation points, and then it it shows to my screen. Okay, it looks like th here's packet one. This source went to this destination. I sent it uh, uh, out, and then this destination responded to this source. I you know I received it in. So so you're actually able to see every single packet that is being sent to and from this device. You can imagine uh, why in a production network. I mean that was what you see filled the screen was five pings. So in production, when you have thousands of packets every single second, if you were to turn this on. A lot of times the routers just literally lock. So what what's done often is access lists are applied to filter it down. Let me let me show you what we can do. Uh, so so I want to create a filter for for PC2 so I can do a debug. Let's do uh, uh, undebug all that turns off all the debugs and because we don't want to get flooded by any means. Uh, but I want to do a debug where I can see if any of these protocols are coming into my my router or going through my router or whatever. Uh, so I can go in there and I can do uh, access list. A lot of times I, I use numbered ones for these because they're always temporary. I'll just do 170. Uh, permit. Uh, and now I'm looking for, for three TCP protocols. So I'll say permit TCP from any source to any destination equal to port 25. See that? Equal to port 110 equal to port 143. I'm creating this custom filter that says if any source sends anything, me being anything, uh, traffic on this port or this port or this port, which is those three protocols, then I want to know about it. Now again, creating access lists all day, they don't do anything until I do uh, an application. So here's another, we don't always have to apply an access list to an interface, that's only for security. So here's another use. I can do a debug IP packet, but Cisco knows you'll crash your router if you put that with too much traffic, so they always allow you to filter it down using an access list. Now also notice, they don't let you use a named access list to do this. Some things, there are some things still to this day in Cisco that you must use a numbered access list for. That's why they're still around. So debug IP packet, uh, filter it using 170. Okay, so now if I do a ping, you know, I do that same ping, uh, I can see the ping, and, and notice, no no messages were displayed because it's like, well, a ping doesn't use port 25, 110, or 143. So let's let's uh, let's go a little forward. Let's here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to uh, router two and attempt to access this host on one of those port numbers, right? Uh, so let's bring up uh, PC two, and then let's go to uh, router two. And the way that I'm going to access them on one of those port numbers is by using Telnet, just like we did previously to test this. So I'll do Telnet to, what is his IP address? Uh, let's find out. Show IP interface brief. I think he's dot 50. I know he's dot 50, but I've typed the command. So Telnet to 192.168.2.50, and then I'm going to put port 25. Look at that. Connection was refused by host. That's fine. This, <laughs> it's not an email server. It's a router. But I'm able to verify. Look at that. I just received a packet from that person, and I'm able to to uh, see what's going on. Um, I can say, well, show me port 110. See that right there? Uh, show me port 23. Not part of my access list, right? I'm able to get in there, and you know, no no messages are displayed. Whereas if I would if I wouldn't have had that access list, check this out. Uh, here, let me just bail out here. Bad. Uh, so let's just do uh, here. I'll do a you all. That's a shortcut for undebug all. Uh, and then I'm going to do a debug IP packet. And now what? Now watch what happens when I do that same telnet. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like that. That's just for that telnet session. So you can see how valuable it is. Uh, to be able to filter it down to just, uh, again, just another perfect use of an access list. Now let's accomplish our goal. We need to permit access to this guy using only SMTP, POP3, and IMAP4 from anywhere. So already, again, we're thinking ahead, right? We have to create the access list. We have to configure it. But we don't know where to configure it yet because we first have to determine where it's going to be applied. What, where am I going to apply this? Now, this this kind of reverses it. Remember, I said it's best to e apply extended access lists as close to the source as possible. Well, the problem is we don't know the source. 
It could, you know, it's saying permit access using only these ports from anywhere. That the, so the source could be over here, could be over here. There could be some cloud here with, you know, raining dogs. I don't know. What, what, anywhere is a big name, so it could come from anywhere. So there's no way I can say, okay, I'm going to put it there to catch them as soon as possible. Now I have to put it as close to the destination possible because I'm filtering it from anywhere. See what I mean? With that, with that anywhere argument, it kind of changes the story a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang out on router 2. Uh, that's, that's where the filtering is going to happen. I'm going to go in and, uh, oh, I was telnetting. Uh, so back on router 2. There we go. Go into global. Let's do IP access list. Uh, I don't know. What do you want to call it? Uh, extended. We'll call it port filter. Uh, and then we will say, well, actually, you know what? Better name. Email filter. Those are all email protocols. So maybe maybe that is an email server. So uh, we will do permit. Uh, so what, what are we permitting? We're, we're permitting TCP-based traffic, right? Not IP. That's everything. TCP, because all those are TCP-based protocols. From where? Well, it's in a box below the screen. Anywhere. Uh, to where? Well, this is where we can get a little more specific. We can say, okay, this is going to the host 192.168.2.50. And you know that we could have also left host off and done 192.168.250 with a wild card of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's fine. So we've got uh, permit, protocol, source, destination, and now the destination port number. Uh, destination port will be equal to, so I'll put EQ, to 25. And now it's as easy enough, Barrow. 110, 143. Uh, and so now we look back here and say, okay, well, where am I going to apply this? Again, from anywhere uh, means it could be coming in here, could be coming in here, could be coming from some mysterious interface that hasn't been added yet, but will be someday. So I think it would be best, since it's always from anywhere, to catch it as it's going out. So as things are coming in here, they're not filtered. But once they go out to try and get to that server, that's where I'm going to smack them down. I'm going to say, no, you, you've got to use these ports. Otherwise, you will be denied access. So let's go to uh, router 2, back there, into interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0. And we will do IP access group. And it is, what was it, email server? Email server, right? Email filter. Glad I looked. Email filter. Oop. Outbound. Good. Now we've got it in action. Let's test it. Uh, let's go. Let's, let's camp up at, at router one. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll attempt to access that host uh, from router one. So oh oh good. I just good grief. I just caused an outage. <laughs> Some I I just took down the network. See how uh, and and I did so on purpose uh, because I wanted to demonstrate. What, I just you see how easy it is uh, uh, to where I said uh, uh, you know allow access to that host um, using those port numbers. Let's let's do a show access list. Okay, I didn't do it on purpose, but man, that would that have been devastating. So what this did is it says, okay, permit any host to access this guy using this, this, and this. And you know there's an implicit deny uh, for that. Now, we might say, well, isn't that what we want? Well, maybe, but isn't there more people on that network than just .50? I, I know we can only see in this little picture a .50, but if I've got a subnet here, I'm assuming the reason I have a subnet and not just like a crossover cable going to a computer is because there's other hosts on here. You know what? They just lost their access completely because even if they're trying to come out, nothing can come back in because the only thing allowed back in is these three port numbers. So, whew. Any of you catch that? IP access list extended email filter. And let's do, let we, now we need to add a statement. We will say uh, deny uh, IP from any source to the host 192.168.2.50. Now you're, you're going, well, that wasn't what I expected you to do. Let me do a show access, uh, do show IP access. Uh, so right here, you, you, wait, wait a sec. I, why are you denying? I thought we, you said we've been too restricted. Well, well, we have because uh, nothing, everything else is denied because the statement I'm going to follow this up with is permit IP any any, right? So now, now we've got 
Uh, these three ports allowed. Everything else is denied to that host. But then everything beyond that, because we weren't told to put any restrictions beyond that, everything beyond that is allowed. Okay, well, <laughs> it's already applied, so I, the damage had been done, but now uh, connectivity had, has been restored. But, oh man, I, I'm kinda, I didn't do it on purpose, but yes, I'm kind of glad I did because do you see how easy it is? You're like, oh, I, I see my objective. Let me just do this, apply it, and I mean, right there, that would have been a complete network outage for everybody else on that network, except that one server, but even even that one server would uh, would only be uh, be able to get those those three ports coming in. So uh, good. Do you see now why I said that extended access lists are almost always used for filtering, like we've been doing all along? They, there's just so much more flexibility than a standard access list. Uh, so at this point, you might say, well. I mean, after seeing that, it seems like all I would ever use is an extended access list. Where would I use the standard? Uh, standard are still used in, in particular places, but usually they're applied for a specific purpose. I want to do one more demonstration uh, to show you a typical use of a standard access list. Uh, it is for restricting access to Telnet and VTY. <laughs> Did I just say Telnet and VTY? Telnet and SSH, which both come in the VTY ports of your device. So here's, here's the, the problem. A lot of times we have our routers connected directly to the internet. That's one of their key goals, is to take the internet connection and route it into our internal network. Well, once we connect it to the internet, it's going to have an IP address, we'll just say 150.1.1.1, that anybody out in the world can access. And you know what? Cisco, by default, does not have any kind of password locking mechanisms or things like that enabled. So, so somebody uh, out here in the world could just run a little script that runs all day, every day, that tries to telnet or SSH into your device and attempt different usernames and different passwords. It's called a brute force attack. They're very inefficient because that's what they have to do. They have to sit there and just try and try and try until it happens to, to come across some combination that works. But the problem is in their persistence. This guy can start a brute force attack and walk away and allow it to run a year later. It's still running. I mean, and by then it's tried thousands and millions of possible combinations of passwords likely uh, could stumble on yours depending on the strength of your password and so on. That's why we need good strong passwords. But, but why, why run that risk? Let's set it up to where only particular IP addresses from the outside or maybe no IP addresses from the outside can get in. Now, we don't want to apply an access list here because that will now filter all traffic. That are, that's going into that device. I just wanna I just wanna apply an access list that filters access to VTY. Well, there's a special command that allows you to apply an access control list to your VTY ports. Uh, it is known as access class. So what I can do is create a standard access list. For instance, let's just say my internal network is 10.1.1.0/24, and I only want my internal network to be able to telnet and SSH in here. Uh, I don't want anybody else. Uh, nothing from the outside world. Uh, so what I can do is let me let me just uh, grab a router. Uh, any router will do. How's router three? I'm going to go in and create a standard access list. IP access list standard, and we will do. Uh, let's just say. VTY ACL. Now, once in here, I'm going to do a permit 10.1.1.0. Wildcard mass 000255. And hit enter. <laughs> Is it, after seeing extended access list so much, doesn't simple or, or standard just seem so simple? It's just like, a, it's like wow, was it really that easy? Um, so that's it. So just permit those source IP addresses. Now, instead of going into an interface, I go into oh, line VTY zero space four and do access class followed by what access list I'd like to use VTY ACL oh inbound uh, so essentially now as People are telnetting, you know, in telnet and SSH, both use the VTY lines. As they're trying to telnet into my device, uh, 
the VTY is going to say, are you from 10.1.1.0? If you are, you're allowed. Otherwise, you are completely restricted from telnetting uh, to this device. So standard access lists are great when you can apply them in such a way that it doesn't impact a bunch. Of, if you just need to identify a whole bunch of source addresses for quality of service or for telnet access or for, uh, uh, again, the millions of other uses that you will learn in your journey through Cisco, then absolutely standard access list is the way to go. So much simpler. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.